Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 14. Uh, today, we're going to discuss peaceful means to counteract tyranny in your everyday life and um, <clears throat> what's the best way we can achieve voluntarism and anarchy um, the quickest. So before we talk about that, we'll, we'll hear about the Bipcot license from Jeremy. Yes, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is now covered by the Bipcot no-gov license. This allows reuse by anybody other than governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about that at bipcot.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. So we're going to talk about what are the different ways to maybe nullify unjust laws, although we could argue that all laws are unjust. Um, some may be redundant, as in, you know, murder is illegal, theft is illegal, rape is illegal. <laughs> some are outright stupid, such as suicide is illegal. <laughs> and, and then the uh, outright unjust laws, such as uh, most victimless crimes, which uh, constitute, you know, the uh, entire tax code and uh, <laughs> drug laws and, uh, you know, various regulations. Crimes against like the state. <laughs> crimes against the state, right. Which, which or, actually or, the word crime is, is, is something that only pertains to the state. So if you really want to say what's a true crime, it's, it, you can't really use the word crime, right? <laughs> crime, I think, pertains only to the state. Or yeah, originally, it originally yeah. It had to do with kings, right? I think that's where it derives from. It was a, a, cr 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 a crime was an action against the king. Right, yeah. So violation of a uh, person's um, civil liberties, perhaps, so freedom. Yes. So, so, um, so, yeah, so, you know, Larkin Rose did a great rant recently talking about how, uh, what would happen if, um, if, you know, some kids engaged in, you know, started a lemonade stand and then you had um, armed people uh, right there uh, defending them if some um, agents of the government were to try to shut them down. And uh, and how would that turn out, right? Because, um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's very difficult to say, you know, would they call back up and forcefully subdue everyone and maybe even, you know, start uh, bloodshed and <laughs> all to shut down a lemonade stand? Like, like it seems very, uh, you know, absurd. To think like that, or would they just back off uh, because most uh, most cops, you know, don't run into a dangerous situation. They're not like the uh, the brave law enforcers that we see depicted in Hollywood movies, right? That uh, <laughs> they like to they like to portray, you know, the image as being. So it seems like to me that they're more it would be more fearful as to their you know well being rather than uh, you know really trying to subdue people as as in what's happened in the Bundy Ranch right where where people really uh, you know took a stand and didn't allow them to uh, to uh, to take the guy's cows away <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was I, I was I was gonna say that I mean that's that's a pretty good example of seeing what can happen um, when you have an organized effort like that um, my, my dad actually who, who's in town right now was uh, one of the ones who was there at the Bundy Ranch Oh, really? Um yes. Uh he uh he got to know Mr. Bundy, I believe, correct, Pops? <laughs> is it, yes, you yes, you know Clavin. Um so So yeah, they uh you know, you, when you when you do that, when you show force like that, then chances are especially if if the news is involved, they're going to have to back down because they don't want to let people see what they're capable of. Um but I, I think in the scenario of the the lemonade stand type deal being an, an armed escort like that would probably invite the possibility of hostilities. Um, I, I think more so uh, people um, just just surrounding the lemonade stand, not, not even necessarily being armed, or at least having you know maybe a couple of people having concealed weapons. Um, but just you know, just like that uh, that incident, I think there was one recently in Florida where where the cops tried to arrest a guy. Uh, for having an open container and a crowd of people was like yeah no we're not gonna we're not gonna take this and they they literally surrounded the guy and were like no we're not gonna let you take him and the cops had to back down because now you have a crowd now you have you know now other onlookers are, are staring at this and it's like what are you gonna do it's are you going to arrest all of these people now are you going to shoot these people um you know and, and they and they have to back down now i mean you've seen in other incidents where the cops have have had to lose face a little bit you know something like with the eric garner case you know afterwards they ended up uh they ended up harassing and finding a reason to arrest the guy who videotaped it 
Um, <laughs> and that that happens a lot too. So like they'll they'll tr you know if they do back down, there's a good chance they'll try to find a way uh, to to nail certain people later on. But I, I think in general, um, you know, there's there's been a couple of these cases where people have just made a human shield around an individual because they were literally doing nothing wrong. They were committing a victimless crime, and I, I think that would would be more. Uh, successful on a more regular basis and I, I'd personally like to see it happen more often um, you know I, I'm actually since I've been hearing about these stories uh, I, I've been trying to seek out people locally who'd be willing to uh, to partake in something like this with me because I'd be willing to do it you know why not it's it's a great I think it's a it's a peaceful means of resistance you know or we you know we're, we're, we, we hear stories of, of years gone by where there was civil disobedience and you know, people try to do that. Well, why not? Why not us? Why not now? Um, you, you get enough people, and and you make a point. And uh, I, I think I think it could really work. You know, like I said, I, I think taking guns to the lemonade stand may invite more trouble. Um, but I'm not necessarily going to tell people not to do it either. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, if if you think that could be effective, it's it's basically creating a little militia. And it it may sound silly to some people, but how silly, how ridiculous is it? Is, is that these little kids are getting harassed by cops in the first place and being told you don't have a permit to sell this stuff like really oh, well, it's the land of the free though right <laughs> I, I have the permits to prove it yeah, right. <laughs> i am free no like you saw how much you saw how much news uh attention the bundy ranch uh scenario got right imagine the same scenario over a lemonade stand that's like to me that's like uh <laughs> the biggest molehill out of a mountain like how much money is like the government spending what 12 million a day in Iraq alone or, or Afghanistan alone? How much money is the little girl's lemonade stand taking from the state in tax money? <laughs> like, it probably wouldn't even be worth that officer's time. Like, the, the, the time that officer spent shutting down that lemonade stand, they lost more than they could have ever reaped from that girl having a lemonade stand open. We're not talking about a business on Main Street right here. We're talking about a lemonade stand in someone's freaking yard, all right? <laughs> it's just ludicrous to think that, you know, if someone's neighbor, someone's neighbor called, well, like of course. the cops didn't come out there anyway. So like, there should be open accountability on who's reporting things to the police. In my opinion, that would shut a lot of this stuff down. You can't, you can't submit any anonymous tips. Anything anonymous is. It is you are it is discounted and thrown away. You have to put a name, your freaking everything on it. That way, the neighbors find out who's calling on their daughter. The whole neighborhood can say, "Look, if you call on us again, shit's gonna happen. You're 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 pushing the buttons here. This is aggression. You calling the cops on peaceful interaction." Well, so, I think in a free society that would work. In the in the current system, I don't. I don't, I don't, I'm not, well, I mean, obviously, number one, it wouldn't happen. Number two, I don't think it really could in the current system, only because it, that, that's kind of a blanket statement because the, the whole idea, I mean, obviously, there was, there was, a, there was, a, a, as, as usual, a good intention behind the anonymous tips originally um, because there were situations where people were literally a f afraid to go to the police because they were threatened, you know, something happened to them. But now cops can call in their own anonymous tips. Well, uh, no, again, uh, that's what I'm saying. Which is just pure it, bullshit. Well, yeah, well. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's another example of the state starting out with a good intention and then it gets abused and then everybody... So I get what you're saying, but I, I don't think you could say nobody who makes anonymous because who, who, what if somebody had something happen to them or a friend of theirs and they were they were threatened and intimidated so now they don't want to go and they, their only recourse even in a free society if you had private security you know if your only recourse to was to go to people and not and try to be anonymous just protect yourself so in most cases i think you're right but i think there there are those extremes that unfortunately you can't just say that nobody should call anonymously mm -hmm. but that but i think that the bigger issue is is that you're right that somebody most likely did call um because they thought it was being a nuisance but i mean I remember growing up as a kid, you know, I mean, obviously at that point doing stuff like that was probably almost 30 years ago for me. Um, mm -mm. But, you know, it, you, you used to be able to do it all the time. And, and the sad thing is, is the officers in question can hide behind the, well, it's just the law and they're not doing it to punish the kids. They're doing it to be consistent. 
but we know that to be a bunch of garbage too because almost every as far as i know every officer in every precinct in every state has a discretionary policy that they're given so there isn't this you know consistency there can never we've we've discussed that before there can never be consistency there can never be equality under the law because once you give the law enforcement officers discretion then the equality has gone because somebody who's rude to them maybe they will treat more harshly um as yeah, they're not somebody, robots yeah well no, ex yeah exactly and i'm not saying that they they should be although dave you have made that point before that that's i would prefer it have. over well of course but and i'm not saying you shouldn't you know it, it's nice when they look the other way but that's you can't have that equality so people that um are gonna hide Plus, every that cop say, is well, a liar right they either protect a liar a known liar or they lie themselves they uh, and and if I mean it's according to the book um, I think Harvey Silverglade um, the you know three felonies three felonies a day <laughs> if they were if they were strictly enforcing the law we would all be in prison right because every single day we all commit felonies right I mean every single person that goes over the the speed limit should be arrested and imprisoned right <laughs> but of course you know discretionary policies right so so you know it's yeah it's kind of funny that they that they target you know kids with a lemonade stand it's like it's like I think the the, the epitome of a peaceful situation yeah I think it's I, BS yeah. that a cop you know cops <laughs> carry around this knowledge that if they follow someone for X amount of time, they can eventually find probable cause to stop you. That's too much power for any one individual to have. I can't follow someone and say, hey, I think they did something wrong now, and pull them over for no reason with a gun in an emergency situation. Like, that doesn't make sense to me how they have that power. And that's why I'm one of these kook crazies that thinks the police should be disarmed. <laughs> I mean, if all they're doing is, is tax enforcement, which is almost every law that has no victim, uh, they, the ones that are hunting the ones that have victims, arm them. But don't arm the ones that are out there enforcing traffic laws or beat or running a beat that, uh, you know, having a presence, etc. They don't need a gun. Yeah, well. If they need a gun, they f find a house, somebody has a gun and say, hey, I need you to come help. <laughs> I'm I'm getting harassed for stealing from people. Yeah, well, it, it would be it, it, disarming most of the cops would definitely be good for my business because the canine community would uh, see a boon and there wouldn't be as many of them. <laughs> yeah, so. right. Uh. You're killing you're killing my competition, literally. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not my competition. It's my customer base. <laughs> oh, you're your customers, right, right, right. <laughs> so, um, you know, I I think. I, I mean, that, that, that may be a little extreme because that's, you know, disarming. I mean, I think, co I think cops should be abolished, number oh, one. Yeah. So if we can't have them abolished, we at least need them disarmed. <laughs> they shouldn't be able to just roll up and shoot somebody because they have earbuds in their ear. No. They, well, like, they, that's, they that's, 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 bull, that, that's certifiable bullshit. Mm -hmm. No <laughs> one should be able to walk up and shoot somebody and then it be plausible that they may, they may get off. They should be shot as well, in my opinion. I know two wrongs don't make a right, but I don't really want a, a society full of murderers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if you take the um, the guns away from the, then you know you're taking the teeth away from the uh, the dogs, <laughs> and uh, and then I think most people will kind of understand that you know wait wh why do I have to listen to what this guy says you know he doesn't have a gun you know so I'm just like him right maybe I mean maybe he has a stick but I can pick up a stick <laughs> right but you know what once you have uh, you know law enforcers have uh, have most of the guns and then then you enact you know further gun control. Uh, regulations and laws and you further reduce the population of people who have you know who are armed and you know you have a disproportionate society of armed versus unarmed and you know this it's a situation that's ripe for uh, ripe for abuse and uh, democide and you know fun stuff like that <laughs> every mass genocide in history has followed from disarmament of civilian population every ever like by the book every every mass genocide I think I think they all read Largan's book, um, "How to Be a Megalomaniac." <laughs> how to be a successful tyrant. Yeah, right. yeah, how to be a successful tyrant. That was I never actually read it, but I did listen that to his podcast so, where he read he it. Was re it was, when he was reading it, I, I just got the chills. Like it's so creepy how well he knows the mind of a tyrant. 
Well, he wrote he wrote he wrote that when he was still a minor when he was still an admitted minarchist, and he was just it's... he was just getting over because he references you know he referenced the Constitution a lot in there and in a positive way. Yeah. Um, but he was still that close to it. But, mo you know, many, I mean, I know the three of us are like that. Most of the people we encounter are the same way. You tend to, you, you know your enemy because you once were the enemy, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and the closer you are to that, it's easier to remember how they think and how That's how why they, we're so good react. at debating minarchists. Yeah. Like, we were minarchists. It's like, I know every one of your, it's like being an ex-communist. I know everything you're about to say, buddy. <laughs> like right. I, I understand that. Like it's like, like uh, if you were a Democrat your whole life and then became a Republican and you got into a debate with a Democrat, you know everything they're gonna say. That's me. I did that. <laughs> so I was a Republican my whole life. So if I run into a Republican, it's very easily easy for me to destroy everything they say because I want to tell those beliefs dear. So, but well, this. This whole peaceful, like, armed resistance, uh, not like I'm going to shoot a cop if he walks up and does something, but this, like, scenario of people just stopping cops from arresting people, I think is a beautiful idea. I mean, no one's stopping these police from uh, arresting a murderer, right? Like, no one's stopping, like, if some if someone's raping someone in their, in their neighborhood and the cops get them, they're like, no, you're not taking this one. Like, they want... <laughs> They want murderers oh. and rapists and thieves. They want them out of society. But when the cops are the murderers, the thieves, <laughs> and the rapists in society, it's very hard to get rid of them because everyone, even even the people that were in uh, the uh, Baltimore thing, the, the, the police basically have done a work stoppage. They only, they only do like, they sleep in their car all day because if they get out, they could get killed. And... They're like all the all the people in town are like, oh god, cops are, cops are not doing their job anymore. Like uh, the people do whatever the hell they want now. It's like, why not let the free market fix this scenario? Why not open up, destroy the police monopoly that's in Baltimore? Let's just take Baltimore for example. Destroy the police monopoly and let other private security agencies, and there are many, go out there and try to. Think of how many jobs that would create for those communities. Well, I could I could see that happening. Uh, you know, you just look what happened. What's going on in Detroit right now? They have at least two that I I know of where you know private defense private security agencies have popped up because the the entire city pretty much collapsed with their bankruptcy. Um, so it is it's possible and it could work, but that's got to scare the bejesus out of the law enforcement officers in those areas and the surrounding areas because you know they may say they're afraid you know they, they don't want to deal with this stuff and you know i saw a lot of stuff especially in baltimore where you know after the the police basically said well we're not going to do anything for right now uh if you want us out of here fine we're out of here and then i saw a lot of cops and 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 pundits and stuff saying well this is you know you wanted them out and now this is what you get it's like well yeah, they say that, but when their jobs are are seriously threatened and their pensions and their paychecks are threatened, then all of a sudden they'll be singing a different tune. <laughs> um, so right? th that's the problem. Like, you know, you asked why why not let the free market? Well, because that would just ruin everything if we let the free market So in. we have Medicaid, right? And Medicare mm -hmm. and all these state-ran uh, essentially insurance companies. And we also have Blue Cross. We have... United Health Way or, or healthcare and all this, and they do a much better job than the state ran. It's not free for the person who's getting the service, but um, uh, uh, like the state ran versions are, but they provide a much better and much more comprehensive coverage. So wouldn't like wouldn't that translate as well to security? Like the problem is, is that police don't provide security. That's not their job. Police are there to enforce the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, you have to, like, that's probably one of the first basis of realizing that the state's all bullshit. Is this monopolized protection agency, which is the police, the law enforcement officers, are not there for your protection. They're to maintain peace because if things got crazy, tax bases could get destroyed, right? <laughs> and they're there to enforce the laws, which are just, opinions with guns edicts from our masters 
So they're not doing. They're not a positive on society. You know, Dave, you were talking about before about the um, you know no one would complain about the murderers, rapists, and thieves um, getting arrested, but but what happens when the when the law enforcement themselves are the murderers, rapists, and thieves? <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> I was saying. They are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you have the problem, right? Where they're human too. They're not. They're not exactly. some special breed of human <laughs> exactly, that doesn't yeah. rape, steal, and murder. <laughs> like there are murderous cops. There are raping cops. There are cops that steal. They're 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 one step a- above the ordinary. Right? They're given power, but somehow they never abuse that power, <laughs> right? So, uh, well, you know, I remember Larkin Rose made an interesting comment. He was about people who think that there wouldn't be security without the you know the police, law enforcement. And if you think about, just think about, you know, the uh, you know the very um, you know specified different kinds of things that people sell, like <laughs> like the example of a of a of a of an apple cutter or you know, I don't know yeah. something for something really <laughs> insignificant like people make money selling that and you don't think that people would want to make money and providing good quality security and protection <laughs> without law enforcement like you really think that there would be a you know a vacuum there like nobody would think that <laughs> they could there's make a, a successful business market. model on that? there's a thriving market for heated toilet seats okay yeah right like and that's like the most minute like freaking like ridiculous shit like that is non pertinent to sustaining your life as possible Listen, I, man, I you, really you, like... you live in you live in Alabama when you live in New, when you live in New York winters heated toilet seats are a little more important than you think. Oh my right. god, I understand. I no no I understand, but it's a, it's a security is a little bit. High. You know, you have like shelter, food, security, and what like happiness would that be after that? You know, yeah. so like heated toilet seats is way oh, down here oh, on the in, list. In New York, heated toilet seats is above happiness, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, they're directly they're directly intertwined. It's what causes happiness. Heated <laughs> but no, 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 like, yeah, Larkin hit it on the, hit the nose on the head, you know, and it's basically just a different version of my ice cream parlor scenario. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. how many places in your town can you go get ice cream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many? <laughs> like, every, every grocery store, every, almost every burger shop, the ice cream store, shops you know etc etc you can get it at freaking taco bell Mm -hmm. but yet there's no way that private security would have a market no fucking way in the whole world (laughs) ice cream that's feasible that makes sense to me but not me living every day safely (laughs) people make no sense to me that's too much to ask dave come on (laughs) ice cream i can understand (laughs) Well, that's that's that, that's that's the whole you know. I, I hate government and and I don't trust them, but we should only give them the important things to do. You know, yeah. that's that's because pe- people people don't see past that. But that's why I think measures like this this peaceful type resistance can be can be very beneficial for for multiple reasons. Not only can it get innocent peaceful people out of you know, quote unquote, trouble with the law, but it can also start fostering a sense in in the community that this occurs and that, wait a minute, maybe we don't need the these particular police officers for, for everything, you know, especially if you take it to the level of the armed protection, you know, or, you know, maybe, you know, like, like what's going on in Detroit, they're being left alone because, well, the cops have just all cleared out because, you know, most of them aren't getting the paid city and the rest of them are like, it, yeah. yeah and, and, and the rest of them are like, I want nothing to do with this because some areas have become, you know, ridiculously dangerous. Um, but the other ones, these, these agencies have popped up and, and that's, you know, that's the thing that that's a, a real life, real time right now scenario where people, if they, they can pull their, you know, heads out of their rear ends long enough to stop thinking about this, the stupid distractions that keep it get put in their face and actually look at that and say, wait a minute, here you go. You know, there was a need. The, the police force fell because they ran out of money. There was a need. What happened? Somebody stepped forward and not even just somebody, multiple somebody's stepped forward because there's at least two big ones that I've heard of out there. And I'm sure there's more forming now, you know, that is what the market does. That, that's how the process works. Left to its own devices, problems need to get solved. People aren't, well, people are stupid. <laughs> Individuals are not. People as a whole, a group, you know, what's that, let, what's that let line? Let me play devil's that advocate. From Men in Black, <laughs> um, something about, you know, people are big, big, you know, big dumb animals but you know on their own they're okay um because they're not you know people people they want to be secure like you like you said they want to feel 
like there's protection. So if the police force just up and left in your town, I'm pretty sure within rather short order, armed people would get together and say, hey, we need to do something about this. You know, there's plenty of towns across the country that still have neighbor neighborhood watches. You know, what is that? That's a group of concerned citizens that doesn't feel that they're getting enough um, protection from their local police department or something's happening that's not being addressed. So they took it upon themselves to do it. You know, that's just a small scale thing. And most people wouldn't even think of that as a form of disobedience. But essentially it is because the police have a monopoly wherever they are. They have a monopoly on the services they provide. If you do anything that clashes with, with what they're supposed to do, technically you are disobeying them, you know? So it could start as small as that. And, uh, you know, because it, I, I get, not only do I get tired of seeing these, these stories in the, in, the, in the media about these, you know, these poor kids with their lemonade stands, you know, there was one even worse one. It was last year, or a couple of years ago, maybe, where there was a kid who set up a, a free, essentially a free library in front of his house he had like a little book stand that he put next to his mailbox and it just basically said, you know, if you want to donate a book to this, donate it. If you want to take one to read it, please just bring it back when you're done just so the people in the neighborhood could read wow. and learn. Nice. And the, the cop shut it down because he was, <laughs> no, he was essentially it running a he was running a library without a permit. Basically, it's like free. He wasn't charging any money. It wasn't the cops didn't shut him down uh, to correct the town did. The, the town, no, no, the it town. wasn't the town. It was the. Um... The zoning manager and the building, uh, yeah, you know, that's like the uh, they're the town property managing. Et they're, they're the town, dude. I, I deal with them here all the time. I, I, I had the, the zoning department try to. They come said it was a me. structure and it needed to be attached to the house or behind the house yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> But that's well, what, then that, what the hell is my mailbox? Because it looked about the size of the mailbox. It's it's it, that. Well, that's federal property, son. Your mailbox doesn't actually belong to you. Once you put it on so there and put let it me ready play for devil's mail, advocate. it's federal property. Let me play devil's advocate, right? <laughs> Detroit Detroit goes tits up bankrupt. I mean, they are, but they're still kind of propped up from certain things. Welfare, mostly. Um, but their cops go completely kaput, right? All these private defense agencies come in. They secure it so well that businesses want to move back in. So, therefore, people want to move back in to work in these businesses. Um, at what point does the police department open back up? Yeah, I mean, so, uh, well, they, they, they want they, to as soon as they can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think. That, so that, does it, the it, private it, defense it, agency shoot itself in the foot by providing a superior product? If a monopoly with force can come in, you know, a lot of liberals don't understand that they're so anti-monopoly. Anti-monopoly, yeah, but screw big business, and then they don't realize that government is the biggest business of all. So the biggest monopoly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, but, but yeah, like, what do you think about that scenario? Do you think that's a plausible thought? I mean, I, mean, I think uh, the people have to, yeah, I mean, they, they have to understand how much better the Viper, you know, whatever private defense agency would be providing, uh, you know, as a as a as a alternative to you know to law enforcement, and uh, <laughs> hopefully, you know, they'll get educated into the uh, you know the the beauty of the free market and volunteerism somehow. <laughs> hopefully, one can only hope that they it won't slip back into the same status you know destructive paradigm that produced the whole <laughs> collapse in the first place, right? Otherwise, you're just going in circles. But um, but yeah, that's the that's the challenge is you know that. That you know, we have to show people the gun behind every piece of legislation, right? Including <laughs> lemonade stand. I think I was reading a uh, an article uh, a few a few months ago about all the all the regulations that a lemonade stand has to comply with <laughs> in order in, to be in California. Was it in California? <laughs> Like uh, like 50, I'm not sure. Is like it 50? 50 <laughs> yeah, in California, to open up a lemonade stand, it's like 50 <laughs> regulations. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's really absurd. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I guess some people, some people say, you know, yeah, you know, not all laws are good, but for the most part, you got to obey the law. But uh, I'm, I'm like, but, but still, they, they don't, they don't understand, or they, they they're not processing the fact that. That okay, you know, we can take away this law, but it's like that we're not we're not getting at the, the root of the problem, right? The, the root of the problem is we are giving a select group of people, you know, unlimited power to to uh, make whatever legislation or law 
go into effect that we all have to follow unquestioningly, unquestioningly. And in the meantime, while it does get, you know, repealed by voting or, you know, ballot measures or whatever, you know, peaceful people are imprisoned and caged. And and are people really willing to, you know, to to take that, you know, very slow path towards, you know, towards a, a, a better world? Like, it just, it, it doesn't make sense. It's just... Yeah, like, drug prohibition is like shooting... The government shooting its tax ba- tax base in the foot, you know. Think about if dr- drugs were legal, uh, and all these people that are locked up for drugs would be working in the drug business. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's just guess that. Uh, let's just say that only half the prisoners that are locked up, so a million, give or take. So that's a million tax paying citizens that you're putting in jail doing nothing. That's a welfare. It's, you're essentially creating a welfare problem that you then have private interest. You know, judges, lawyers, bankers, or bank, banks pro- propping up these prison corporations, propping up police, uh, you know, it's propping up all this other stuff and it's just still taking, taking, taking from society and never really giving back. And it's just like, that's just one law. That's just one DEA, you know, the DEA was made with a stroke of a pen. That's uh, cost us more than, you know, a trillion dollars, which is. Like, people hear the word trillion dollars and they, oh, okay. Like, you can't fucking con- conceptualize a trillion dollars. Like, you really can't. Like, you honestly, it is impossible. Like, if you was to see one trillion dollar bills, you would, like, your mind would go, what am I looking at here? It's like, it's like the Twin Towers stacked up twice. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, the way, the way I explain, you know, the difference between a million, a billion, and a trillion is, you know, a, a million seconds ago is uh, two weeks two weeks right and i think a billion seconds is 31 years and a trillion seconds is 31,000 years <laughs> so i say a trillion seconds ago there was no human civilization <laughs> right so people can kind of understand because yeah we, you're right you know we we tend to uh you know people's mind goes numb and you know their eyes glaze over when you say oh yeah we're in you know 18 trillion dollars of debt but what does that mean what does that mean to anybody it doesn't really any, doesn't really mean anything to anybody um but you know <laughs> i can buy a big mac for a dollar who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mcdonald's is a special this week so all right so, <laughs> so uh you gotta you gotta say you know, uh, like people are willful willfully ignorant and they lie to themselves I, I truly believe an anarchist isn't someone who accepts this new basis of rationale. It's someone who quits lying to themselves with acquired knowledge. Once they acquire knowledge, they don't allow themselves to lie to themselves. So that's what you have. You have a bunch of statists, and it, let me use that in the pejorative. You have a bunch of statists walk around. They don't want to hear these things. They, they want to lie to themselves. They, ignorance is bliss. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to see the underside of this. It's like I say a lot of time. It's hard to see outside of the empire, but when you're out of it, it's real easy to see what's going on in the empire. Yeah. Well, to to get back to to your your devil's advocate question, um, I I just wanted to say the I think you've seen that on a smaller scale. Um, I, I think there was a, a town or two in Texas that did this. And there was a couple other ones somewhere in the south where the, you know, the police force left for whatever reason, budgetary you know, constraints or the people got fed up with them and they just they fired the whole police force. And then they hired, you know, smaller, you know, private security and it's working. And, you know, a lot of the naysayers will say, oh, that's just on a small scale. But. You know, I, I think Jeff Berg, Jeff Berwick has talked about this too, about in, in Acapulco, where the same thing happened. Like the, you know, the was it the traffic cops and another section of the cops down there went on strike mm-hmm. because they yeah. wanted more money, and nobody noticed they were gone. <laughs> and a yeah. couple months later, when they finally started to notice, hey, these guys aren't around anymore, then the cops were like, well, now we want to come back. We decided we'll take what you know, we'll take the money now. And they're like, <laughs> people were like, no, we don't want you to come back. <laughs> and yes, that's Mexico, but it's the same principle. You know, that's what you were, you know, we were getting at before about what, you know, you asked, you know, how long do you think it would take? I, I think it would really depend on the area and it would depend on if private security companies had popped up already um, and how effective they're being, you know, and if you get enough people that can recognize that and see, hey, things are actually calmer around here and we're not paying, you know, we're not having we're not being robbed constantly to pay for this stuff 
um, they may fight back and say, no, we don't want you to. Now, like someplace as big as Detroit, if the if the government is allowed to keep operating, then most likely the police force will come back and they will force these private companies out or maybe try to convince some of the more accomplished members of these companies to come work for them now or something like that. You know, like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Well, because the, once the politicians get back into the full swing of things, they'll start up their propaganda machines and and point everybody to the bad locations. And say, well, look, this is still happening. You still need us, and and enough, mm -hmm. enough people are scared. But if it happens, you know, in smaller areas or or even in that bigger area, if it happens and the the market responds quickly enough, then you know people will start to recognize that. And I, I think that's another way that you know you could just. It, that would most likely have to be started in small areas, but you know, you do that. You get together with a bunch of people and say, "We don't want to do this anymore," and find ways to fire the police force or find ways to, you know, cut it off on a on a local level. And then, once they're gone, institute something better and show people. You know, we 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 talk a lot about the problems and what we see. You know, and Dave, you just kind of hit on it with, you know, once you're on the outside, it's hard not to see this stuff. Um, and a, a lot of the times. Uh, a lot of the objections that you know I deal with personally, and I know I know a lot of us do, is you know, well, you're not you're not providing any solutions. Well, here's some solutions. Let's start taking this stuff like literally. Like, you see, like the conservatives and the Tea Party members, um, and even some people on the left, they're always chanting about you know they they need to take this country back. And it's like, well, okay, I, <laughs> I don't particularly want to take a country back. I mean, I equate a country to a nation. Um, and I know I was actually challenged on this by one of our former guests at one point that um, if you look from the from uh, the etymology standpoint, country actually had nothing to do with government originally. It actually literally meant like countryside type stuff. Yeah, but things um, change. But but a nation, but a nation. So like I, I don't want to go back to that. So I don't want to take my nation back. I have no no interest in that. But take your community back and not to take it back to a level of government but to show people like you know get out and do these things that's why like i said i'm i'm seriously trying to find people you know if any of our listeners are on long island and would, would like to help me out with these uh roving um human shield type deals get in contact with me <laughs> i would love to start something here locally like that i'd like to see this, that type of stuff happen more often if you get on um, the news and you don't say the seas liberty.com it's really not worth it you know you know i you know i'll be screaming <laughs> as they as they are as they are pepper spraying me and beating me with their batons you know that's what i'll be screaming it'd be kind of hard for them to do that when you have an ar-15 in your hand right well again i i'm not i'm not saying that i'm going to be armed i'm not going to be armed but i i would i see Especially here in New York, it, it'd be much more beneficial to have a group that's unarmed because anybody with a weapon is, is, a, is a target for the police because you don't see a lot of them in open because we don't have open carry here because um, it's not allowed. We, I, don't, um, I don't know why there hasn't been somebody test New York State's laws of, about guns, especially New York City, because every gun law in New York City is flat out unconstitutional. And who was the guy that shot the three uh, the, the three guys in um in, in the subway and got acquitted? Um, oh, I forget his name. Uh, was that uh, Reginald Denny or was that um, might have been somebody else? Think I think might have been. Um, but, well, yeah, but like that's like he would have gotten killed without that gun. Yeah, well, yeah, but the, you'll get, but a, a lot more often you'll get killed with it, you know, especially if you get surround if you get see because the cops out here are you know they're a little trigger happy. Um, <laughs> even though they know most of the people they deal with are, are not armed because they're not quote unquote allowed to be. Um, but I, I think, you know, I, I'd like to see pe more people start up, uh, you know, a lot more people opting out of the state in different ways and saying, well, screw the regulations. I'm going to start my own private security company, regardless of what they say. And even if you have to start small and just start building up some trust in your, like your neighborhood and just be like, yeah, we, we want to do this. And you you need to show people that these things are possible because there needs to be an app for it, like yeah, the amber the, the, like the amber alert app. Well, I, yeah. honestly, Danilo's I, getting assaulted by an officer for well, smoking weed. You know that, that's what that's what Peacekeeper actually was designed to be. Um, it, it never it, it never took off as as much because uh, that's that's another Cody Wilson project, right? I believe Peacekeeper. Cody, Cody Drummond. Oh, Cody Drummond. Cody Drummond. Um, yeah. They, you know, it's it's a great idea, and it's it's getting your neighbors, your friends, your family that live close to you more involved, and 
so you don't have to go outside to the police or or whatever you know and 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 rely on them when they're not going to be much help because they most of them you know as you said earlier dave they're not there for your protection they're there to protect the state they're there to protect the interest of the state they're there to enforce the state's laws you know that's why the whole serve and protect that is still ridiculously written on half the cop cars across the country was i mean it, it wasn't even a matter protect of the supreme, and serve. it wasn't even a matter of the supreme court eventually ruling that no they don't actually have to protect them so they never were it was never about that i mean sure some cops in some smaller towns may have thought that some cops may have always believed that's what they were there for but it was not never their job because they were there to be the enforcement arm for the state and and be a separate class of citizens because they are once you you have the power to enforce these things you're in a separate class um and they're going to fight because they you know they they make their money their their entire their their entire lives are subsidized so they're going to fight tooth and nail to make sure they stay they're needed you know i mean that that's another angle i could see you know you you know dave you, you, going back to you asking about what would happen in detroit if they came back like you know, I wouldn't put it past, especially the police unions in a scenario like that, to go out and start trouble to try to prove to the people that history, it's needed. Like, yeah, you know, history would history would back that claim up as well. Yeah, they'll they they're not gonna they're they're not gonna relinquish their their power that easily. They're not gonna relinquish their essentially free ride. But you like know, I've pensions, said that before. like the cop, the problem with cops is the problem no, well, there, there's multiple problems but the, one of the largest one of the, problems. <laughs> one of the largest problems is 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 they become unionized right so then you have this entire monopolized security force for your town that can just say you know what we're not doing it we should be in my opinion illegal i am saying there should be a law against police strikes right if we're all forced to pay for to them law. If we're all forced to pay for them, they shouldn't be able to say, "Ah, oh, we're not doing it." So, you have this union. You have these unionized, right, with basically impunity. Then they get pensions and the the best health uh, best health best health insurance on God's green earth. And, and then, so you have the, this huge problem with it's not economically viable because they don't produce anything for the for the society. They only take. And then you mix that in with Supreme Court cases that prove over and over and over again that the cops aren't there for your protection. They are not obligated to protect you. They're obligated there to protect state interests, like you said. Of course. There was a, there was a great um, Julie Borowski uh, post that she did on her Facebook page. She said, really? um, what, would you do, what would you do if you know, the laws were suspended for one day? I don't know if you guys saw this one. <laughs> And and the, the top comment was like, I would open a lemonade stand without a permit. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, I would drink raw milk, you know. I would uh, I would I would uh, add an add an um, an addition to my deck <laughs> without a permit. <laughs> you know, all this stuff. And probably like I would I would smoke a joint, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> but but it's just it's just funny how you know. Um, you know, a lot of people understand that, you know, I guess maybe they're mostly libertarians, but they, they, they understand that, you know, the, the victimless crimes and, uh, you know, every law is, a, is an opinion backed by a gun. But, but then, you, then at the same time, you talk to some really diehard statists and they're like, well, we got to obey the law. <laughs> you know, if it's a law, then there must be a good reason for it to be there, right? Those runaway <laughs> slaves. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was going to say that. that that's become my favorite um jimmy russell right recently when somebody throws that law that you know the law is the law and if you would just obey the law like there was another um post i think it's from that stupid american strong facebook page was circulating again and they, they've got quite a following apparently although every time i see their their post it's, it's flooded with people like us who are just trolling the hell out of them but that's <laughs> been my comeback to these people you know it's like it, it's it's true though it, again if you think of it logically saying that oh i just you know well it's the law so you got to follow the law well okay then that is an admission that had you lived in a different time that you would have been turning in chattel slavery you know chattel slaves or the jews or or anything like that. like that that you in order to be consistent on any level to say the law is the law then if you had lived in that time you would have had to obey those laws and that's just a very twisted way of thinking i mean obviously the whole state is 
mindset and paradigm is, is set on twisted thinking because you have to convince yourself um, that that things are, are not the way they actually are in order Well, I don't to... think it's convincing. It's indoctrination. Well, it is, but you, but, but you were, we were talking about earlier about how people, it's, it's not just a matter of they don't see it. It's, it's that willful ignorance because they have to turn those blinders the on. The thought of a police officer's job being right or wrong has probably never crossed 90% of people's minds. No, I, I think it, I, I think depending on the circumstances, it, I mean, it usually takes something hitting close to home or maybe something out of the ordinary oh, that yeah. gets slipped in the media that people see it, but they quickly fall back on, even if they start to have those thoughts, they quickly fall back because it's that, well, they've always been here. What will happen without them? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that that's what it is. So, you know, I, but that's what I, that's what I, 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 that's what I now lead with when it comes to that, you know, the law, the well, law, they're going to the find law. out, they're going to find out what it's like to not be here when cities go bankrupt because they can't pay these pensions and these, all these government workers that work for them, they go well, tits up, you know, like <clears throat> New York may not ever go tits up because it's got the largest stock market in the world in it. But you know, cities like Detroit, all the businesses got out because of the economic policies of the area. They went tits up. You, you can't pay the cops. So we found out what happened. So yeah. well, you're going to find out what's... You, people are going to find out in this nation, and I'm making a bold claim here, probably within the next 10, 15 years, what it's like to not have these so-called false safety nets that they believe are in place by the government. Oh, I got accidentally pregnant. Okay, my state free health care will take care of me and my child because I chose a bad action in life. It, it was an accidental pregnancy, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, those happen, but I mean, it's, you know, oh, and then, oh, because there'll be no subsidized abortions, right? Because like 90% of abortions are subsidized, you know, and, and all these, oh, Black Lives Matter, well, the number one race that's getting aborted out of oblivion is the African American race in this country. So if you're sitting here saying black lives matter because a cop goes off the rails and kills one or two black guys every month, there's 20 billion times that happening every year. What was it? 56 million black aborted fetuses in one year. Yeah. Like, that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to, I just want to say before we, uh, before we end, uh, you know, other peaceful means that, uh, that we could counteract, um, tyranny would be you know what one of us try, trying to nullify unjust laws and then you could also have you know just agorism just trading you know in the black market or the gray market just you know unregulated outside of uh, you know off the books right um you know paying in cash which which uh, which i believe is actually on the way out right cash is, is starting to be uh uh eliminated as well so uh, they're you know trying to crack down on that and on that, but you know using Bitcoin, right? Using precious metals, you know, bartering, you know, perhaps, which uh, not always easy, but you know, <laughs> can be done. But yeah, there's a lot of ways to to peacefully um, opt out of the system, and uh, you know they all have their merits, and and I think uh, they're all useful, right? So so there's many ways that you can peacefully counteract tyranny. I think agri a practical agorism can choke out, especially local markets. Uh, people are just like, hey, uh, uh, City of Commerce, we're not registering with you. Uh, we're not even official business, but we're just going to do our thing over here. And you're not taxing us because we only take Bitcoin and silver. So unless you want to send the tax man to come pill for our coffers uh, and you will be met with violent resistance, uh, eh, I don't see it happening for you. Yeah, well, and when the town can't pay their police department, then the police department goes. Well, I, I just I just wanted to say on on that point now that now that you bring it up to um, the I, I think the the problem I see with you, you know the projection you gave of like ten to fifteen years is it possible yes um, I I, I kind of worry about that a little bit though because that's always the thing with me when when that collapse happens and people aren't ready for it then it, it can end up, you can end up even worse for a short time because um, people would be scared and panicky that's why I'd rather people start getting into this stuff now and start preparing themselves for that possibility <laughs> or, or even if you want to call it the ine or, uh, an inevitability 
uh, you know, I mean, obviously it is an inevitability because that, you know, what's it that? It is an inevitability. Well, I, I like, say, it's going that? to happen. Well, of course, because that, like, that falls it, in. Calling someone a tinfoil hat for saying that the dollar is going to collapse is there. You're, you're not thinking straight. Well, the dollar no, is going to co- collapse eventually. That, that that ties into that that old, uh, you know, Margaret Thatcher line about, you know, the, the, the paraphrase of, you know, the problem with socialism is eventually you run out of other people's money. And that, yeah, that's exactly what happens. And that's what you saw in Detroit. You had those policies that eventually you ran out of other people's money because people ran away and didn't want to live there anymore. So you, you lose your tax base and you can't afford all these pensions and stuff. So that's why I think now is, is, a, is a great time to start putting these things into action. And I also agree with you, Daniel, you know, the agorism route, you know, I did that with my company. That's what I, as of, as of the beginning of this year, I started taking in that direction where I'm getting, I'm working my way out of the system. I don't, I never accepted credit cards. I don't accept checks anymore. Um, I prefer to bar, I, I barter with some of my clients. I take gold and silver. Uh, you know, I, I, I still have to take cash because that's what most people deal in. But, you know, it's. If it's if there's a way for you to do it, and there's always a way. There's you know a lot of people say, oh well, I'm stuck in this job where I where I have to get paid and I have to pay. T-. It's like, well, no, there there you always have a choice. You you can find a way out of it. Is it easy? Not always. Is it is it readily feasible? Not always. But if if you really want to make these changes, then yeah, it's it's a good route to take, and start trying to find other people that are willing to trade with you, even if it's for you know personal products you need food you know i mean right now i deal with a local uh you know food co-op that's where i get my food from uh you know my my fruits and vegetables like that right there that that's another form of like anarchy in action where people are getting together and and, you know and you're you all chip in and you all you know you all help this little company grow and and you don't need the state for any of that you know so you do stuff like that you know you find other ways to do these is is the co-op like a subscription thing uh, well, what do you mean is like, I just, I, I signed up for it and they, oh. they deliver food every two weeks. I give them money and every two weeks they come, okay. they, they come drop a big box. I think I've seen a, I think I've seen a, a co-op where it's like, uh, you know, you have a restriction on how much you can take out, but you just pay a flat out subscription fee to come there every week. Yeah, no, there's ones like that too. Just here locally, it, for okay. me. Just, I, I, I was just asking. Oh no, there, there are ones like that. My, mine just happens to be, you know, it's, it's it's a little distance away where they're located. So they just, they deal with the, the surrounding couple of counties and uh, you know, you give them a flat fee every week or every two weeks, whatever you want to do. And they just fill up a giant cardboard box of as much stuff as they can pack in it. Um, you know, but like I said, that that's a form of, you know, that's a voluntary interaction. We're dealing with them and I'm, I, I don't need the state for that. So there's all these things you can do, you know, people, complain that they're stuck in their jobs well find other things that you're good at and start your own business and 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 don't worry so much about you know it always comes down to fear people are afraid of crossing the government too much because they don't want to get in trouble would you suggest forming an llc or no 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 i actually i uh i had one um, because when i started my company i obviously was still a hardcore status and never thought about these things and when it was first brought to my attention it was like oh this can protect you you know you get special legal protections and at the time i said oh that sounds wonderful and now i look at it and go oh it made me a separate class of people no i don't want that i don't want special legal protections um so i actually am in the process of dissolving my llc uh, I, I mean, mean I, I knew the answer to the question i just wanted to ask you yeah no i mean i, I obviously will not tell people what to do but I, a recommendation i would recommend against it you know again you have to do what you feel comfortable with um, I am somebody who's willing to push the envelope a little bit, you know. I've talked about it on other shows. I challenge the traffic laws a lot. Um, I challenge, not, I, I try to be as polite as possible, but I, ch- I challenge officers when I see them. Um, I, I go well beyond that three felonies a day thing because I'm sure I'm committing tons of them with the stuff that I do. Um, because, you know, we, it got mentioned earlier about the, you know, the, with but the Julie Borowski thing about the you know what if, if one day all the laws well you know what instead of instead of asking yourself what would you do if you had one day with none of these laws start living it now start ignoring just flat out ignoring as many of the laws regulations whatever they are that have no victim attached to them and just you know take a stand you know, it, it may not be for everybody, but the more people that start doing this, the better, the better things will get. 
the, the quicker the quicker the end will come if more people you know I, I've, I've made that analogy you know what, what if there was an election and nobody came what if there was a tax day and nobody paid you know they can't once that happens once there's that and you know it doesn't even have to be everybody but more and more people just start doing things on their own and and again showing others what's possible showing others that you can live a life not abiding by all these stupid laws and regulations but you could still not hurt anybody not aggress against anybody else and still lead a very happy and productive life and I well think yeah and if key. you really really like taxes the next you know next year when you go to pay your taxes make sure to not claim any deductions or any dependents or anything like pile on as much and then write an extra check just for good measures if you really really enjoy what the state's providing you that's what I tell people when they give me the well if we don't have taxes we wouldn't have roads etc cetera, etc cetera. I say okay well then why don't you just step your game up and pay more taxes <laughs> if they're that necessary to your life step it up Quit being a puss. <laughs> Donate and, some more. <laughs> Donate some more, yeah. Like, uh, put your money where your mouth is. The problem with socialists and anybody that believes in, well, communists, because socialism is a wing of communism. The, the problem with communists is, is they always think it's someone else's money. They always think it's someone else's property. They never think of it as theirs. Um, so they have this real problem with putting their money where their mouth is or putting their their property where their mouth is or their, their the, the product of their labor where their mouth is. So yeah, if you want to pay more taxes, go do it. So I'll give my my, my final comments. Um, I, I I think one other one other uh, way that uh, I've heard even some volunteers say that they uh, you know, are contributing to the end of statism is actually accepting um, get government checks. <laughs> you know, because like even you know teachers or even some uh, ex-military people I've heard, they say they, they actually um, think, they, they, well, they say, if I accept a government check and I use that money towards, you know, voluntarist means, right? Buying silver. Or, ends, <laughs> or, or yeah, or, you know, it's better that I have that money than is used by, you know, the military or, or you know. So it's better that I have it, right? And, 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 and just the fact that statism is, is an inevitable collapse it's an inefficient business model because it's not even a business so it is destined towards collapse so by accepting it it's it's um accelerating its collapse and also by you know opting out of it is accelerating its collapse on both ways <laughs> it's doing so uh although some people would say it's immoral to accept it but um you know and then they say well you know the the funds are stolen so i didn't really do the stealing but i'm just accepting it <laughs> but, but that'll uh, get so you put in jail that's, that's a post that's a post justification but uh we but should yeah, put so. every government worker in jail for receiving stolen property <laughs> i right. get it now <laughs> so if you guys want to give uh, any final remarks or or you just want to i i love you guys i love this show uh if you want to help support us Check out our website, thecsdeliberty.com. Um, if you want to suggest a guest for us to have on, if you want to suggest uh, any changes to the show uh, you would like to see, um, please do so. Uh, and, you know, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook. Check us out everywhere you can. We're going to be working on that Patreon site soon. Um, and, uh, you know, just be happy. Be happy. I tell people that all the time, and they think it's some. I'm telling them to climb Mount Everest. It's just like, no, just be happy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you know, how far did you walk for water this morning? Like, when's your when was your last meal? Okay, then you have nothing to bitch about. Be happy. <laughs> yeah, I I would just say that it's 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 tough to be happy when you when you're on this side of the fence and you see everything. But I, I think Dave's right. He's got a point. We. Uh, because I think part of the reason that we wanted to talk about what we talked about tonight is because a lot of times it's easy to get down and 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 just point out all the horrible things that are wrong, um, but that that only goes so far, you know. And then eventually you're in an echo chamber talking about that, and that's all you're talking about because nobody else wants to listen to you. Well, if if we if we want to see what what you know what we look for to happen. We have to start changing minds, and it starts with yourself. And you can do it with your children, but if you want to hasten the thing, hasten things up, then uh, getting out there and being a little more positive and giving, um, not just trying to spread happiness, but and spread these ideas, but also spread these possible solutions and 
and just try to find some more like-minded people and, and, and try to just encourage others to, to see the possibilities. That's, that's really all it is. You know, most people are stuck in the, in the paradigm because they don't even, it's, they don't even want to think about the possibilities, much less, you know, um, put them into action. But if you could show them that these things can work, you know, that's the reason I did what I did with my business. You know, I, I, have, cl I have clients that have been with me since the very beginning. So I've known them for almost 10 years now. And I was very open about with them about why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, you know, I got a lot of weird looks, but I also got some people that wanted to ask me questions. And I said, I basically want to show other people that this is possible. I want to show other people that you can work outside of the system and still be successful and still provide a service and still, you know, be competitive and not, and then not have to worry about all the other BS, you know, I mean, you may have to duck, you may have to duck the, uh, the agents of the state every now and then, but if you're, if you're willing to deal with that, then, then go for it. So get out there, meet some people, Find some friends who want to be a human shield with you. Whatever the heck it is, <laughs> just get, just get out there and start putting. In, instead of sitting around and bitching about it and thinking that you can't do anything, because I thought that for a long time. But instead of sitting there thinking about it, prove these theories. Go out there and you know, go out there and show people. Go show yourself that it can be done. And you know, it, it it's a powerful thing. You know, it, it was takes for me. a small. It takes a small, tiny, little bitty, almost barely seeable spark to burn down an entire forest hmm. yeah. <laughs> literally all it takes is that little bitty spark yeah yeah i like jeffrey tucker's uh um the, the quote about uh you know if you really want to improve the world or spread anarchy find something that you're you know skilled at and passionate about and be the best that you can be in that, you know, start a business, add value to society. <laughs> That's how you spread anarchy. That's how you spread love. That's how you improve the world and raise a standard of living for your fellow man. Um, and and like Dave said, you know, it's all about love and it's, and it's about happiness because statism is a doctrine that's founded in fear, right? Fear and um, you know, hatred for your, for you know, or, or fear of your of your fellow man, of your of other religions, of other cultures, of other you know, nation states, right? It's always about fear. Fear of the unknown, right? The monsters that other people might become, but through the through believing in statism, we become those monsters that we fear other people to become. So <laughs> it always happens. Yeah. So um, thank you very much. Well, everyone, I, I want to plug listen. a website before we end. All right, zerogov.com. Check it out. <laughs> yes, we will. Hopefully, we're going to have uh, Bill Bupert on here um, in a in, in an episode quite soon. So we're looking forward to that. So uh, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, this is the Seas of Liberty podcast. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace. Bye. Peace.